Good morning. Welcome to Community Church of Chesterland. Wherever you are on life's journey, you are always welcome here. For those who are here, we have some rituals um, of tradition that are available during this Lenten season. You can come up at any point during the service to um, use the anointing oils or the ashes or to share a prayer or a release um, on the dissolving paper with the bowls of water here. You can do that, like I said, at any point during the service. And um, that we'll also be sharing of our joys and our concerns during our prayer time. And we want everyone uh, to know that that is, is open to all, right? You don't have to be specific. You can just say, need it. Um, sometimes being able to name our need is enough and being able to in real ways experience the support of a community that wants to be and continues to be in in thought in prayer and emotional connection with us is so so important and very valuable especially when we've been experiencing so much isolation so let us prepare our hearts for all of these gifts that we are going to give and receive during our worship together by joining in our opening hymn.
Let us continue in an attitude of praise as we join in our call to worship. In this season of Lent, we make our way to the cross. We remember the steps that led Christ there. Betrayal and fear, but also trust in God and love for humanity. In this season of Lent, as we make our way to the cross, we strive to follow Christ's example, to admit betrayal and fear that are part of life, to embrace trust in God and love for humanity. So we may make our journey and let us worship God. something to show you all today. I do have mine. You gave it to me for good luck to keep up here. So yesterday we took a little family adventure. Um, and I just got to say, sometimes when you lean into your children's request to go up to the Lego store, you end up walking upon free champagne day through the department store. I didn't know there was such a thing, but I just said, thank you, spirit. <laughs> um, but we ended up making our own Lego minifigures yeah. of our family. Yeah, we specifically modeled them after ourselves. And the boys helped me make mine. Uh, I picked the smirky face, but they picked everything else. Yeah, there was a hair part, but it fell in between the cars. Yeah, that's why your hair's not brushed, right? No. No other reasons. Okay, so, yeah, so that's why it's a newspaper. So sometimes there are certain items, right? Or certain expressions or certain accessories that make us think of someone, right? So like you guys gave me a newspaper before I had the hairbrush because I got a lot of hair. Corwin picked a guitar and a laptop because he likes music and he likes um, gaming and creating. And Kieran picked a popsicle because who doesn't like dessert and also a gamer remote control. Uh, Today, yeah, I also wore, control. this was my grandmother's and her grandmother before hers, pocket watch. And I wore it today because it makes me think of her and it, I kind of feel like I get some strength from it. So there are certain names or certain items that make us think of people. And today we are going to meet a character from scripture who 
people associate, people kind of connect their name with certain things. So his name was Peter. Do you guys know what Peter's nickname was in scripture? What? Does anybody else know? Oh, come on, y'all. The Rock. What? Do I know? Cultural appropriation, I'm calling it right now. <laughs> yes, Peter was known as the rock, right? Don't he was supposed to be the strong one that the church would be built on because he had such strong faith. But then in the story that we hear today, Peter had questions and Peter had doubts. And, and then if he came, well, does that make me not strong enough? Or is that maybe just exactly what the church needs is to be allowed to ask questions and to explore those things so that we grow stronger and name means a lot of things so the name peter comes from petra which means petrified and rocks are petrified petrified that's exactly right Not corwin do you remember what your name means friend of the heart friend of the heart or heart's companion kieran do you remember what your name means your first name means dark and your middle name after my dad means light but light. also it could also be light and then light too so names like any word hold power and hold meaning and we need to be thoughtful with our words because we will be remembered for them Peter did all of these wonderful things for the church, but the thing he is most bonk, bonk, remembered for is the day that he had questions and the day that he felt unsure. So I want you to always be thoughtful with your words, but to know it's okay to ask questions. That is not going to taste like a popsicle. Let's say but a prayer. It's a popsicle. I know. It's going to taste like it. It tastes like a popsicle. So let's say a prayer, okay? Dear God, thank you for giving us such a powerful thing as words. Help us to use them wisely and also to use them with courage to ask the questions that we do hold in our hearts so that we can explore more deeply together, to be closer together and closer to you. I say this all the time. But that's because it's true. One of the greatest gifts we share as a community of faith is the opportunity to be in prayer with and for one another. And this is not that cliche phrase that has been spun out in our culture of late of sending thoughts and prayers. It is a commitment to take action, to invest our hearts, to be broken in, open in compassion, which means to suffer with. You are hurting, therefore I am hurting. You are hungry, and therefore I am hungry. This is the depth of community that we are called to in the church. And if we are truly committed to that, it will inevitably lead to actionable behaviors. Today, we want to offer prayers for Morgan, who's not feeling well, and that's why we have recordings, but also prayers of gratitude and some of, of grief. As we uh, received news this week that Morgan is following her heart and her calling to be more invested in her local community where she lives and has submitted her resignation here, and that means that her time has a projected end and not just we know we will not always be able to share in these gifts. We are grateful for every ounce of her talent and her heart that she has shared with us and will continue to do so over the next several weeks. And I want to invite you to make sure to articulate those things now. We have the opportunity to say them and share them with her directly. We also continue to be in prayer for Ukraine and for Russia and for all those who are impacted by violence in their homes in so many ways. This morning, I know I saw uh, an image of 18-year-old boys dressed in their skateboarding gear, because that's what they had, who would go off to receive three days of training and then to fight for their country. 
for us to be broken open in compassion means to acknowledge these are the realities for our kindred and to be with them in as much solidarity as we possibly can. We also continue to be in prayer for all of those who are seeking release, freedom, liberation, peace, whether within their own minds, their own household, or their country. Many of us are waiting for the coming spring. And though we lost an hour and have officially sprung forward, there's still snow on the ground. And that feels like a painful metaphor today. Let us join in an attitude of prayer together then. And anything that remains unspoken can be unfurled in our hearts during this time, of course. Divine creator, spirit of all kindred souls, we come before you acknowledging that we are complex creatures. And yet sometimes we make things more complicated than they need to be. We worry and we run when we could walk. And sometimes in our rush, in the push, to make things happen, to force the growth. We forget to simply experience the moment because some of these things, though they are blessed and beautiful, they hurt and we don't want to hurt. We avoid suffering at ad nauseum but also at great cost. And it is difficult for us to sit in these 40 days with you and remember not only that there is suffering in the world, but that there is also still suffering or aching or healing that needs to happen in our own hearts. And that cannot happen until we acknowledge that we hurt. But we do for our own experiences and for the injustices we see around the world, within our communities, within our own relationships. And sometimes they swirl so rapidly in our own minds. It's like a carousel we cannot stop and we just want to get off and run away and find that forward movement again. Help us to slow down because it does no good to move until we know where you are calling us. Help us to listen, to be patient in those quiet moments and to wait. God, we know that there are others who hurt more than we do or differently than we do. And so we also ask that though it is painful that you continue to keep us open, open open-minded, open-hearted, open-handed. Because sometimes it is in being present for another that we find healing for ourselves as well. Or direction and wisdom or hope but certainly love. And the greatest of these is love. Let us lean into that. Let us live there. Let us dwell there wherever it may take us. We ask for all this in the name of the one who suffered so that we would see the kind of transformation that is possible to come from that place. Amen.
bits of Marie Clay and I will Today we continue our, our Lenten journey, um, exploring those final days that Jesus would have shared with those closest to him and also some strangers who happened along the way and their, their role and their experience of that unique moment in the history of our faith. Today we acknowledge that People are complex. We have a lot of layers. None of us are simply one thing. Peter is not just the rock. I am not just a pastor. You are not just a... And so we dig a little deeper. And we acknowledge that no matter who or what we are or where we are on life's journey, as we say, we all still have blind spots. It can be really difficult to face them when someone is loving enough to point them out, especially when they are contrary to our character as we see it. You enter into the story with me, Peter's declaration about Jesus from Mark chapter 8. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist. 
And others said, Elijah. And still others said, one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed. And after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside, began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on the divine things, but on human things. Let us take a beat to sit in the solidarity of suffering and consider these words with Peter. So, the teacher asked us about the crowds. Who do they say that I am? None of the others got it right. Not a single one, not really. So I... I state the obvious that this man we've traveled with and ate with and laughed with and forgave with, he, he is the Son of God. The Messiah foretold and what's foretold. Since I was old enough to cover my head in the temple, since all of us were, we were taught what was foretold was the supremacy of the people of Israel. The Messiah, this Messiah, would unite the tribes and be seated in glory and peace. No more oppression from foreign powers. No more destruction of our lands. No taxes to their emperors. This is the Messiah. The will of the Most High would be known through his lips. Isn't it obvious that's who this is? Not only that, he's given us every indication that's who he is. Are we not at this moment on the way to Jerusalem? Aren't we? And because I, I recognize the obvious, I am the rock. His church will be built on me. He just said it. I am unbreakable. Count on me, Lord. I'll never crumble. Build on me. But then, why is he now talking about torture and death and betrayal and denial and crucifixion? The Messiah is to enter Jerusalem in glory and power. In an instant, every knee will bend to him, and he will rule justly over us all until the end of time. And we all agree that's what is going to happen. You're the Messiah. Why would you humble yourself to the Romans who have treated us worse than dogs at every opportunity? This is for God's glory. What glorifies God is allowing his chosen people to live in prosperity and wealth that our oppressors could only dream of, this is not the glory of God. Hang on a Roman cross for days is not how we achieve God's kingdom on earth. Murderers and thieves are crucified. How dare you even suggest... And he slaps me. Now with his hand, with his eyes calls me Satan and a stumbling block. I become a statue in my tracks. I can't move or breathe. My gut twists. The world is ending. As we walk again, miles of dirt crunch under my feet without me saying another word. My mind is spinning. Why would God want you to die in such a way? Why would you expect us to just stand by for it and watch it happen? As if we haven't followed you and defended you step by step this whole way. And how do I go from a rock to a stumbling block? 
I know you are the Messiah. The Son of God, I know that every I know that with every muscle in my body. The Messiah will save the people of Israel. Be between us, I'm not the one denying the will of heaven. I I am not denying anything. What do we do when reality, when the words of someone who knows us and cares for us slap us in the face and it stings? Not because they're wrong, but because we realize they're right. We have a choice. Denial or growth. Both will hurt. But one can change you forever. Can we be courageous like Peter? Can we enter that space of vulnerability, humility? It is not his strength or his proud words or the right answers that we've built the church on. It is of these broken places where healing happens and because it, we are of it, we are stronger that we make a strong foundation Without suffering, we cannot grow. We have to see it if we will ever heal. This is our journey of Lent. Will you join me in singing our song of reflection and our sending him? A wondrous sight, O oh vision fair. the wilderness to prepare 
How do you need to prepare your heart? Perhaps we need to allow ourselves to sit in our shadows for a little while longer so that we will better appreciate not just the light, but all the truths it reveals. That then we will be aware and prepared to do the work. My friends, may you go forth this week with the candor of Christ, with the love of the Holy Spirit, and with the creative hope of transformation that we see in the divine and in the world all around us. Amen.